Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. About two minutes away from the end of the Tuesday trading session, the first session this week. I'm Vonnie Quinn along with Shanali Basak, counting you down to the close and here to help us take us beyond the bell with a global simulcast. We're joined now by Carol Masser and Madison Mills, bringing together our Bloomberg television, radio and YouTube audiences worldwide to parse through the most crucial moments of the trading day, Carol. Yeah, it's been an interesting day and it's certainly been one that's been a clear strategy in terms of trading. If you look at the equity markets, we've been down pretty much uh, all day here and a lot of it has to do with the move up once again that we've seen in yields, really a new uh, yield range, if you will, and that has certainly put more pressure on the equity trade and how we think about valuations, Maddie. Yeah, and as we're seeing, the S&P is down by about 2%, and consumer discretionary is really driving that down, Shanali, by, down by about 3% today, following some of those weak results from Walmart and Home Depot this morning, Shanali. Yeah, and you've got to wonder here, if it was only a yield trade, you would see the S&P uh, really moving down in conjunction with the Nasdaq moving further. You did see that, but to the point you're making here, you really saw those consumer stocks take a hit off the back of a lot of those earnings as well. So you're starting to see the Fed doing what it does, impact the economy, but investors are not able to turn around on it yet. And we just hit 23 on the VIX, Carol, and I think we all know that there's no better signifier of, you know, uh, volatility, obviously, in equity markets than the VIX. And we haven't seen 23 for the VIX in quite some time. The move index by contrast is actually turning lower rates volatility is lower and perhaps that's because people are finally uh, repricing that yield curve yeah we've seen a fair amount of complacency a lot of bullishness uh, sentiment certainly on the equity trade but it does certainly feel like a different tone today Bonnie well, we are selling off right into the close. We were off our lows of the session until just a few moments ago, but as you could possibly predict, now we are seeing the lows of the session for some of those major indices. The S&P 500 down 2% on the nose. The Nasdaq down 2.5%. The Nasdaq 100 down 2.4% and the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 2.1%, Carol. All right, taking a look at the S&P 500, the most to the downside since mid-December, so this is pretty significant. And if you look at the S&P 500, we're going to get into the industry groups, but you're looking at most names in that index, Denali, 467 to be exact, to the downside, 36 actually gaining some ground, so definitely uh, a lower trade here across the board. Certainly in some more than others. If you take a look at the sectors here, you're watching the auto part of the sector moved down more than 5% on the day. Consumer durables retailing down each more than 3%. Semis, which had been a popular trade up to this point, down more than 3% on the day. Really, you are having energy and food and beverages be a little bit stickier in this market, only down 3 tenths, 4 tenths of 1%, but really red pretty much everywhere you look. All right, so let's get to it. Some of the gainers, because there were a few standouts. And General Mills, it was top in the S&P 500 today, holding on to a big portion of its gain at its highs today, up more than 6%, finishing the day, though, with about a 4.5% gain. Uh, the company boosted its annual earnings per share and organic new sales forecast. They presented uh, at the big nonprofit consumer analyst group conference today earlier, and they did say customer orders in its pet business have accelerated nicely. Those are the words they used. So far in the third quarter, the company remains on pace to deliver double-digit organic net sales growth for that seg uh, segment specifically. All right, we talked a lot about consumer discretion uh, today because uh, we heard from Walmart in particular and that stock all over the map uh, at its lows today down almost three percent at its highs up 1.3 percent finishing the day with a gain of 0.6 percent a blowout quarter more shoppers seeking out uh, lower prices but they did put out a cautious outlook for the current fiscal year because of rising economic uncertainty keep in mind Target Costco and a lot other a lot of other retailers will start to report next week as well and then I just wanted to get to a seven billion dollar market cap for pharmaceutical company, Apellis Pharmaceuticals, jumping after the drug maker uh, came out with uh, FDA approval for its eye disease treatment. And so you saw that name up about 5.5%, much higher earlier in the session, up more than 15%, uh, but nonetheless still with a pretty strong performance for the Tuesday trade, Maddie. Yeah, it's really interesting to look at the Walmart story today in comparison to what Walmart did to some of these other consumer discretionary stocks. Consumer discretionary is pulling down the S&P 500 by a little over 3%. So I just want to run through some of these equities here. We have Home Depot 
though, dropping today by a little over 7% rather at the close. The street is not happy with the firm's decision to invest $1 billion in wages, hourly wages for its employees amid those profit declines. And this, of course, again, coming in comparison to the Walmart news from this morning that they're a little bit worried. Uh, the CFO saying to on Bloomberg TV, we just don't know. We just don't know what the macro environment is going to be doing to that consumer behavior. Uh, Target also down by about 4% and Costco also down by a little over 1% on that Walmart news. Uh, the idea being that if Walmart sales de declined last year, we'd see that in the data for these other companies, for Costco and Target. And Brendan Case, who covers Walmart for us, was talking with us on radio earlier, and he said it's really important to look at the split between consumer staples and discretionary. Walmart has the benefit of pulling in consumers who are going to be spending on things like food, whereas consumer discretionary companies like a Target may not have that benefit as much. So really interesting to see what these earnings do to the overall market as well. Well, Maddie, we had a rout in Treasuries. I think it's fair to use that word. We saw yields really across the curve move up by double-digit basis points. Look at that, 10 basis points plus there for the 30-year yield. And if you go all the way back to the two-year yield, we were up 11 basis points. 14 basis points on the 10-year yield. This, of course, after some economic data and also just more time letting all of the Fed speak sink in and a couple of Fed hawks last week talking towards the end of the week. Non-voters, true, but we do get the minutes tomorrow, so we'll see if there was more of a discussion of a potential 50 basis point move. And definitely more calls now for a third extra rate increase before the summer. Goldman Sachs, the latest, to talk about a 75 basis point increase. We are starting to get some earnings after the close as well. We just got Caesars Entertainment reporting a loss per share, but beating estimates on same store net revenue. So the estimate there was for 2.81 billion, just beating that by 2.82 billion with that figure there, Carl. And in after hours trading, we are seeing uh, Caesars Entertainment down about four tenths of 1%. Yeah, and that's after a pretty nice pop here in 2023. That stock's up about 23% so far. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, the gambling names, whether it's uh, Macau Impact, as China's been reopening its borders uh, post-COVID, and then also just as the world in general is opening up in terms of travel. But right now, as you said, Caesar, that revenue number, uh, fourth quarter same store net revenue, $2.82 billion. That's pretty much in line. $2.81 billion was the estimate. Stock, though, now down about 1.9%. So we'll look for some more commentary uh, out of the company's press release. Yeah, really interesting to read through some of these fourth quarter results here. A loss per share of 70 cents. And we have some also market context I want to read out here as well. Permanently reducing Caesars total debt by over $1.2 billion during 2022, resulting in total leverage as calculated under our bank credit facility of 4.4 times December of 2022, Shanali. So really interesting to read through some of this context. Uh, absolutely, especially because you're very smart to point out the credit line here. I was just taking a look at Toll Brothers as well, which recently also had extended its credit line. We're waiting for those earnings after the market as well. Remember, the higher interest rate goes, the more money you're spending on paying down that interest rather than investments and employees and technology and all of the above. Yeah, we're waiting for Coinbase earnings as well. And of course, we did see a massive move back up this year in that stock as we saw many sort of stocks that have been beaten down last year, Carol. See massive moves higher but really the move higher already for coinbase about 80 percent or so only takes us to where we were at the beginning of last year all right i want to go back to caesars just because you know we heard from walmart and they gave us uh some concerns about not having a lot of clarity potentially on the outlook for this year well the company's ceo of caesars entertainment tom reeg commenting and saying consumer demand remains strong in all of our verticals and we are optimistic for the year ahead which is why you know pick your company pick your sector and sometimes it feels like you're getting two very different stories, Maddie. It really does, because we've been talking about this for hours because I feel like it's just so interesting to watch Walmart in this space. The CFO saying we just don't know how the consumer is going to respond, and I believe citing that consumer balance sheets are a little bit of a concern. So it, it really just you get all of this information from both earnings, from data. We're seeing this red hot consumer data, Shanali, and then I, I don't know how to parse out this this kind of conflicting input sometimes. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, there's some breaking news as we look along as well. We have Coinbase reporting earnings here. Remember that they have diversifying their revenue and transaction revenues in the fourth quarter. Remember, this was still in the middle of the route for cryptocurrencies. Declined 12% for transaction revenues, but subscription and services revenue grew 34% to $283 million. You have Coinbase already highlighting here cutting expenses to position for improving financial performance. You have so far the market like Liking the initial reaction, shares are up 5-6%. They're fluctuating after hours, but so far, so good in the current report for Coinbase. And remember, the outlook after that, after the end of December, for cryptocurrencies only got better. Yeah, that's quite a pop, up more than 5%, Coinbase Global, uh, as we speak. Remember, it was just in uh, January that they said that they were cutting 20% of its staff uh, and winding down most of their operations in Japan specifically. So it's certainly been a troubled sector. We know the story. Uh, over the last year or so or half year, if you will. But nonetheless, investors seem to be happy uh, about what they're getting. And I think a lot of it has to do with Shanali. You talked about the transactional growth or transaction numbers, and I think that's got to play into it. Absolutely, Carol. And also, we are seeing companies guide very conservatively, right? So that perhaps maybe when they come out with earnings, it's a little better than the markets were anticipating. That's certainly what we're getting here. Also, markets were looking to see what kind of mix shift we were going to get out of Coinbase this quarter. It looks like Coinbase at least telling markets that the crypto market cap and volatility have both improved in the quarter, and that's definitely helping the stock. Although right now we have a turnaround, and it's actually lower yeah. in aftermarket trading by about 5%. So a lot of volatility here. Yeah, exactly. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's down now about 7% Coinbase and Caesars, which we also talked about. It's down about 1.4%. So we'll continue to track it certainly into the Wednesday trade. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Our cross-platform coverage on radio, TV, on YouTube, and of course on Bloomberg Originals. We call it Beyond the Bell. We will see you again, same time, same place tomorrow.